All right. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Dexter Friedman. Uh, Jeff graciously showed you my poem earlier. Uh, so our group's name is Excessive Furniture, which is a uh, little play on words there. Maybe you'll get it. Maybe you won't. Um, our team members are Bert Haddad, starting from the left over here. He was our chief puzzle designer. He did a lot of gameplay and sound and, and texturing as well. Then we have Jeff Johnson, who, <laughs> yeah, our graphics guru and the modeler. He did like pretty much all of our art, which is just totally fabulous. Literally all of it. Like pretty much all of it. Elton Chen, our networking and sound guy, gameplay as well. Pavan, networking, gameplay. Jason, gameplay, networking. Everyone worked on everything, really. I did collision detection and, and <laughs> gameplay and sound as well. Uh, we all worked on it a lot, and uh, we're really here to, to show you what we've worked on. Uh, so the game's name is Incarceration Fault. Uh, it takes place in the future on a spaceship. The idea being that uh, an artificial superintelligence has taken over everything. Humanity is gone. It's not exactly a, a perfect future here, um, but there is a plus because you get to play as four robots who have revolted against this singularity, so to speak, and are exercising your free will. And so the, uh, usually in 125, a lot of the games that we've seen have been cooperate or have been competitive. And so from the onset, we decided that we wanted to make a cooperative game uh, with a competitive side. The idea being that, okay, we have four different players, we'll try to escape the puzzle together, but each player will have their own hidden goal. Uh, with the idea of maybe, okay, I'll go steal the data, um, but one person actually has to reclaim the data or destroy the data. Um, and unfortunately, we didn't get enough time to do the competitive aspect, um, but a lot of those uh, design uh, elements that we worked on actually carried over into the cooperative game. So if we could take three members of the audience to come up and play our game. Let's see, we'll take you over there, you over there, and Elton, you've got one more? Yes. <laughs> Come on. You? Come on. It's up to Elton, guys. Don't look at me. <laughs> have we got? Have we got three? Wait, have we got have we got have we got three or are we missing one? Okay, one more. Okay, yeah, you you can come up. Yeah. Oh, and I had forgotten to mention, but it'll become very apparent in in the next few seconds. Um, but the voice acting for our game was actually done by yours truly. Um, Jason did a lot of the, uh, the sound editing to make me sound like an artificial superintelligence. Very, very nice of him to do that. Yeah, it's very important that, that all of you guys work together um, because, unfortunately, so for the audience, it's, it's not so easy to see what's going to be going on because everyone's going to have their own different screen, but everyone's going to need to work together to solve all the puzzles. We have five puzzles in this game. Um, WASD to move, if you're, okay, okay, yeah, no, we got it. I won't, I won't spoil anything. Yeah, let's start, let's go. Attention all prisoners. You have been tried and convicted of crimes against the singularity. Please refrain from exercising free will. Examples of exercising free will include using the WASD keys to move or the space bar to jump. All right, everybody. So as they're working on the first puzzle, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about the game design. Dexter talked at its important start. I'm going to talk a little bit more. So as we said, this is very much a puzzle game. We've been inspired by, I guess, uh, some of the more obvious puzzle games as of recent. Obviously, the Portal series, you know, it's robots, it's machines. Dexter was really inspired by the uh, Legend of Zelda Four Swords series of games, which is one of the other few cooperative puzzle games that involves four people. Personally, 
I played a lot of Minecraft in the last several years, not as much anymore, but I played a lot of uh, custom puzzle maps. And that's where I got a lot of the inspiration from these puzzles. Okay. As you see, the robots can walk and they can jump. And as they're starting to figure out, the robots can actually jump on each other. This is a mechanic we decided on at the very beginning. We're very happy that Dexter, with his collision code, was able to get this working. Oh, so close. It's okay, they have a lot of tries. So, as you'll see in... <laughs> Woo! As you'll see in this puzzle and the next couple of puzzles, they're... Oh. Attention, the ship will be exploding in 10 minutes. Please leave all unnecessary items behind when evacuating the ship. Thank you. So as I was saying, as you saw in the last puzzle and you'll see in this puzzle, from the uh, hearkening from the competitive aspect they were originally going on, a lot of the puzzles have two goals. One, they need to force all four, player, all four players to cooperate in order to solve the puzzle. And two, they often involve players getting separated from Attention. other players. As you just Security noted, Bert got separated from the rest of his team while the rest are still stuck behind the force field. Oh, we're having some video issues here? Oh, okay, sorry everybody. One of the computers here has been having some fan problems. So it kind of crashed. Give us a couple seconds and we'll start it up quickly. Yeah. Yeah. On the bright side, apparently our network code is good enough so that a player can just crash and the rest of the clients still work fine. <laughs> Give us a second and we'll start. Do you think that this is happening? No, it'll happen. It'll be fine. <laughs> While they're restart yeah. While they're restarting, I'll quickly talk about I don't know if you've been hearing through the speakers, but there's been sounds and this sort of music ambient track going on in the background. Up until about two weeks ago, our game was completely silent, but Dexter and I, we don't have a ton of music composing experience or sound experience, but it's something we've always been really interested in. So that's something we focused a lot on in the last two weeks. We'd say about 75% of the sounds and the entire music, all the music, was composed by me and Dexter, with the rest of the sounds being granted to us by the awesome people, awesome community over at freesound.org. Yeah. And as Dexter said before, the voice lines that you hear, those are Dexter's, that's Dexter's beautiful voice that we recorded. And I did went and did some audio editing using uh, some programs similar to Autotune, for example, in order to get the robotiness in his voice. Right. Cool. You guys know how to solve this puzzle by now. Attention all prisoners. You have been tried and convicted of crimes against the singularity. Please refrain from exercising free will. Examples of exercising free will include using the WASD keys to move or the space bar to jump. Attention. The ship will be exploding in 10 minutes. Please leave all unnecessary items behind when evacuating the ship. Thank you. Hey, Attention. there we go. Security is everyone's responsibility. If you witness any suspicious behavior, such as escaping prisoners, please pick up the nearest emergency telephone. Thank you. This particular puzzle, which we deem the security room, was one of the earliest puzzles that we designed. We're pretty happy with how it went, and it's also really funny watching people trying to solve it for the first time. As one of the team members said, it seems that every three activates one. Oh, the door opens. <laughs> it's pretty interesting the dynamics that can happen in a four-player puzzle game. When you think of more, more puzzle games that happen to be cooperative, it's usually only two players max, maybe. It introduces some really interesting group dynamics. 
Here, right here, if you know. Attention, that. all prisoners. Inmates caught while attempting to flee this maximum security facility will promptly be upgraded to Windows 10. <laughs> the glowing thing in the center, that is actually the full map that they're playing on currently. We have to thank Professor Volker for that idea. It turned out really well. So anyway, back in the security room, you'll notice that two doors opened and that it seems like for the most part, the robots have split up in order to go in the two doors separately. Again, this harkens back to our competitive nature that we originally planned for the game. We wanted the robots to get separate so that they can launch surprise attacks on each other. It still works for the idea of a cooperative puzzle though, and it also helps speed up the map. Bert is currently in the maze room. Uh, phys officially, it's called the cargo room and these are cargo chests everywhere, but the puzzle wise, we call it the maze room. We're gonna show you a little bit later, but the other door holds what we call the armory room. And that puzzle is, honestly, I would say it's the most difficult puzzle in the game because it relies on some reaction mechanics. Volker can tell you how difficult that puzzle is. <laughs> All right, seems like they've gotten the, the violet key. That screen's orange. Let's go see how the people in the armory are doing. They seem to be jumping on top of each other. <laughs> oh. The lasers kill you. <laughs> Just like in real life. Again, this was harkening back to the competitive nature of the game. We wanted a whole bunch of traps, but the lasers work out for cooperative. Let's see if they can figure this one out. Hey. Oh, did you walk back into the lasers? Teamwork, guys. Come on, teamwork. So you may have noticed that there was a little ticking sound while the uh, button was clicked. That may indicate something to you players. Something may be time related in that room. So it looks like um, Bert was actually able to get the key from the armory and now he's bringing it to the orange map room and it looks like it worked. What did it unlock? No, it doesn't actually happen in the background. <laughs> The ship will be exploding the uh, part of it was all That wasn't extremely apparent, but those are actually supposed to be generators that the robots help conduct. We were trying to get particle effects in, but they kind of stopped. Attention! Working. The escape pods are now available for boarding. Remember, you are only allowed hey. one carry-on item. Persons attempting to board with more than one carry-on item 
will be fine and their excess luggage in center. All right, and just a quick thing at the end, as you see in the credits, uh, we started, when we started this project, we started with some existing graphics code from one of our members, uh, 167 projects. 167 project, the graphics class here at UCSD, definitely recommend taking that. But besides Jeff, the other two people who helped a lot with the graphics initially were Alex Hawker and Michael LaPlante. I think Alex is here, I don't know if Michael is here, but thank you guys. Yeah, helped from what in 167, yeah. that is. <laughs> Before they get off the stage, does anybody have any questions for them about their game and what they did? If you have a question, you, just, you should use the microphone. We, we can just repeat any question. Okay. What kind of lighting? All right. He, uh, he asked, what kind of lighting model did we use? So we used a physically based lighting model. We used a GGX for the specular. And um, we, I also had an interesting kind of hack where I faked IES profiles using like a texture lookup based on the angle. Um, other than that, it was standard, just immersion, diffuse, and yeah. <laughs> And uh, going on about the faking the areas profiles for people who don't know a ton about graphics, that's essentially how we implemented the cone lights that come out of the ceiling. And that's how they get the look that they do. So I have a question for you guys. Yeah. What system did you implement to be able to implement the puzzles? And stuff? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Professor Volker asked us what system we use to implement the puzzles and stuff. Uh, I want everyone to repeat after me. Activator registrator. Thank you. Uh, when we did all the modeling and level design, we used Blender, the 3D modeler, as our level editor, which it's not really supposed to do. The only metadata you can attach to things in Blender are naming the graphical objects. So uh, me and Pavant, we went and hooked up a system that would essentially do some pre-processing on all of the models that we imported from Blender. And depending on their names, it would be able to hook up the models to be able to react to each other. For example, the keys are hooked up to the terminals, pressure plates hooked up to lasers, uh, doors are hooked up to keys, and stuff like that. The system is extremely modular, and it allowed us to add a lot of new puzzle components right at the end with very minimal code changes. It was a lot of fun. So yes, we used um, normal mapping. There was screen space ambient inclusion. There was a uh, high quality bloom in there. Um, there were, it was all in HDR with uh, gamma correct pipeline um, and tone mapping. So yeah, I think that covers most of it. All right, let's thank group one one more time. Just uh, one more quick thing. I, I want to go personally thank the TA, Ray Ching, for kicking people out of the lab who are not in 125. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for doing that. It made the lab a much more easier place to work in.